The hallmark of a good children's book is that everyone can enjoy it, even adults. So that's what we're doing today. I've selected 10 classic children's books that every adult should read at least once in their lifetime. I'm going to do this quick fire style because you know what these stories are about. Should you want to know more about these books, I will link all of the books I talk about down below in the description box. And now it's time to satisfy that inner child. And the first one is one of my personal all-time favorites. It is a story about a little pig, Wilbur, who is born the runt of the litter. All he wants is just to make a friend but everyone seems to laugh at them. That's right, I'm talking about Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. A beautiful little story about friendship, love, family and death. Quite a heartfelt and entertaining story for children, but one with a lot of hidden depths and layers if you read it as an adult. Just be warned, if you start thinking on it, this book might just break your heart. Charlotte's Web by E.B. White, an evergreen classic. And let's introduce the second book with the words of one of its characters, Mr. Toad. Travel, excitement, interest and change, come inside. The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham is one of those books that has never lost any of its popularity, even if it's over a century old. It is the story of four animal friends, Mole, Rat, Badger and of course Mr. Toad. Four friends that go on a lot of adventures, or should I say misadventures. Uniquely lyrical in its prose and still very captivating as a story, even for adults. If you're going to look for a copy of this book, do yourself a favor. Look for an edition that has the illustrations by Robert Inkpen, because they are simply gorgeous. They bring the story to life and add that extra layer. Again, an absolute classic from children's literature, the Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. The next book is definitely a book for anyone who hasn't grown up yet. A pilot crashes his plane into the desert and meets a little fellow there. A little man who asks him to, you guessed it, draw a sheep. I'm of course talking about The Little Prince Le Petit Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. A most wondrous story for anyone who still has some childhood inside of them. I find it hard to describe what this book is about, but it makes you feel so much. Never has a book better been described by the simple sentence, if you know, you know. This book is a worldwide bestseller and has been an integral part of many people's childhood. It is the reason why people look up to the stars and wonder. Yet, don't be mistaken. If you reread it, you might find that this story is far harsher and more realistic than you've ever imagined. Keep in mind that this book was written by an actual aviator, a man who flew into war to liberate his country. And in the end, even was shut down. This book is pure escapism from the horrors of war, if I've ever seen one. Yet no matter how you read it, this book is and will always be a literary treasure. The Little Prince, Le Petit Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Now the next book is one of the best-selling children's novels worldwide. It has been translated in 36 languages, sold over 45 million copies for its first installment and it started as an illustrated letter. The author of this book was inspired by her own pet rabbit, Peter Piper. Yes, I'm talking Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter must have been one of those adults who never really grow up herself. A respected watercolorist making wildlife and nature illustrations for proper books only wrote her first children's book when she was about 30. She was terrible at the business side and lost millions of revenue because she never properly installed a copyright on her Peter Rabbit book in the United States. And yes, these are very simple animal stories for young children. These are the adventures of the naughty naughty rabbit Peter who still breaks into the allotment of McGregor even although he was warned by his mother not to. It has all of the qualities of a good young children's tale and at the end of the day, who needs more than that? And again, this is a book that adds a whole new layer to its illustrations. Illustrations done by the very talented Miss Potter herself. Each illustration is a little gem that tells a whole story in itself. The tale of Peter Rabbit and many others make up the world of Beatrix Potter and I'm all here for it. And the next book needs no introduction. This is the story a father wrote for his little boy. A boy that had a lot of stuffed animals who would come to life in this magical 100 acre woods. Names like Piglet, Kanga, Roo, Eeyore, Tigger need no introduction. And if you didn't realize yet that I was talking about 
Winnie the Pooh by A.A. Milne, then you definitely have to go read the books. These tales are wonderfully magical, yet very varied. From very introspective one-chamber pieces to grand adventures to finding the North Pole. Again, these are the characters that many of us grew up with, but it has so much more to give. Take philosopher Benjamin Hoff, for example. In his book The Tale of Pooh, he claims that Winnie the Pooh is probably the one and only Western Taoist. Going through all of the different stories and characters, he shows us that the books by A. A. Milne contain lots of life lessons concerning simplicity and natural living. Yes, Winnie the Pooh taught us a lot about friendship, but he might have so much more to teach us yet. Winnie the Pooh and All of His Friends by A. A. Milne. Now the next book has one of the best character arcs that I have ever seen in a children's book. It is the story of a young girl, Mary Lennox, who is spoiled and unhealthy and a bit of a brat. But when her parents die, she is forced to move into the countryside and live with a reclusive uncle. Not wanting to be contained in a stuffy old house, she goes outside and with the help of a little robin, she finds a secret door. And this door leads to the title of our next book. It is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And this, this is a book about imperfection. In comes a cast of imperfect characters, each with their own flaws. Even the secret garden itself starts off imperfect. A wild, unkept bunch, but with some possibility in it. Which is actually a metaphor for the rest of the story. In a way, The Secret Garden is a book on parenting. It shows us that two Terrible things can happen to kids. They can either never get their way or always get their way. And yes, the language is outdated. It is sometimes difficult to understand because of the Yorkshire twang, but it is ever so much worth it. An absolute gem of a book that everyone should at least give a chance. The Secret Garden by Francis Burnett. It was a dark and stormy night. A classic adventure of saving the world from the big bad and an anti-communist manifesto at the same time. A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine Langle is just that. It is the first book in the Time Quintet, a series of five short stories about having to save the world from the big bad black, aka communism. It is a book with a very straightforward and simple plot, but loads and loads of symbolism. Symbolism that is probably lost on many of the children that read and love it, but makes it a very interesting book for adults to read. Because once you see it, this book becomes something totally different. It is a timepiece. It is a book written in the US in the 60s with the whole fear of communism in the background. If you haven't read this book, then read it twice. Once for the story and once for the incredible rich symbolism and deeper meanings behind this book. And I promise that at least one of two readings will certainly appeal to you. A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine Langle. In 1979, the year that I was born, German fantasy writer Michael Ender writes a book, Die Unendliche Geschichte. Now it isn't until four years later when it is finally translated into English and later adapted into a movie that this book gains some momentum. Because even if you don't know the original, then you will certainly know the title from the English version, The Never Ending Story. A young boy steals a book from a story and when he starts reading, finds himself to be sucked into the book. He who reads the book becomes an integral part of the story and has to help save the world. And from there on, it is a story that never ends. It is a story of a flying luck dragon who likes to be scratched behind the ear. It is a story of many people's childhood trauma when Atreus' horse is sucked into the swamp. It is the story of a great movie, but also an excellent book. And it has always been about the book. The original edition was only printed in hardback because Michael Ende wanted the book itself to look like something like a boy would steal from a bookshop. The original edition was printed in two colors, red and green. One color that would narrate what happens on earth and one color that narrates the whole fantastical story. It was one of the iconic books of the 80s of my generation and it is far due a resurgence. So if you haven't read it yet, then do pick up a copy of The Never Ending Story by Michael Ende. And then we have to talk about Enid Blight. And there is much to say about her. Yes, she is probably one of the best known children's authors of the previous century. Books like The Famous Five and Noddy have sold 
millions and millions of copies. But they have also created quite a controversy. Lots of critics have claimed that Blyton's writing is misogynist, racist, old fashioned and she kind of agreed. She always said that it was very clear which morals and values she adhered to to those that actually read her books. Books that have been adjusted and changed and tweaked to fit modern society and modern viewpoints ever since. Now today I'm not going to go with the famous five or any of the other famous installments Edith Blyton wrote, but I'm going for her nature stories. A collection of 30 very short classical stories about nature and animals and going outside and enjoying whatever you see. They are cozy, they are funny, they are witty and they are charming. Their short in nature make them ideal stories to be read out loud to children or grandchildren and they only come with the moral and value of going outside and respecting and enjoying nature. Whether you are a fan of Enid Blyton or not, this book shows that she actually got her audience. She understood the appeal that nature and furry creatures have to children and knew how to translate it into a short and funny story. If you enjoyed this one, Enid Blyton also wrote uh, pet stories, animal stories, there is lots to choose from. But for today, I'm going with Nature Stories by Enid Blyton. And then for our last book, but certainly not our least for today, we have to talk about Roald Dahl. Possibly one of the most iconic children's authors out there, Roald Dahl needs no introduction. This is the man who invented the Big Friendly Giant, the witches, the chocolate factory, his knack for inventing new words, his excellent storytelling and the superb illustrations by Quinton Blake have all shaped our childhoods. But if you ask me what my favorite Roald Dahl book is, I'm going for the odd one out. A book that is not about fantastical beings. A book that has normal English vocabulary in it. A book without giants, without witches, without fast growing peaches. Simply a tale about a boy and his father. Danny, the champion of the world, is without a doubt one of my favorite Roald Dahl books. It is a story about a young boy, Danny, who lives the perfect life. He lives in a bit of a trailer, gypsy wagon kind of house together with his father and he is probably the youngest mechanic out there. He gets to do what he loves to do and he loves the relationship he has with his father. Even when he finds out that his father has a bit of a secret, Danny is all here for it. This book is one of the most beautiful and the most emotional and the most heartfelt books about a son-father relationship that I have ever read. A book that is surprisingly normal for a man who wrote about all manner of fantastical creatures, but in my opinion, one of his most beautiful. I'm not going to say much more about it because if you haven't read it, and chances are that you haven't because it isn't one of his best known, then by all means, go out there, find yourself a copy and immerse yourself in the beautiful and gorgeous book that is Danny the Champion of the World. And these are just 10 classical children's books. And I hear you thinking, but Bart, Where's Narnia? Where's Wonderland? Where's Anne of Green Gables, Black Beauty? Well, that's where I want to hear from you. Do let me know down below in the comments which is your favorite children's book of all times. And maybe I get inspired to make another of these videos. If you like this video, do leave a like, do subscribe, do leave a comment. And in the meantime, if you want some more adult recommendations, then why not check out this video.